Welcome everybody to the r and CatCast, a fan-based podcast focusing on Montana State athletics. We're two dudes named Ryan from the state of Washington talking about our dear Montana State. We hope you enjoy it. All right, welcome back, Bobcat fans. Thanks for joining us on another episode of the r and CatCast. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Foley. He's your host, Ryan Thornburg. We are the Ryans of the r and the Montana State affiliate of the Big Sky Podcast Network. And I want to take time to thank our sponsor, Gear Up Sports, a youth sports platform focused on solving the uniform and apparel headache for coaches. If you're a youth or high school coach and need some uniforms, player packs, please contact them at www.gearupwithus.com and make sure to mention the r and CatCast. Thorny, we got a treat today. We just got done talking with Coach Tyler Walker, the new offensive coordinator for your Montana State Bobcats. It was a good one. Exciting interview. I think this will be a good piece of content for those of us, all of us Bobcat fans out there looking for something to kind of chew on here as we're in the offseason as we're approaching spring ball. We asked Coach Walker about all sorts of questions, the tight end room, recruiting, quarterbacks, Jody Owens, we we win everywhere. <laughs> it was fun. All right. Well, let's get right into it. Let's do it. Here's our interview with new offensive coordinator, Tyler Walker. All right, Bobcat fans. Well, now we have a special guest. We have the newly minted offensive coordinator, Tyler Walker joining us tonight. Tyler, thanks for coming on the show. No, I appreciate you guys having me. It's it's a good opportunity to get on here and talk some Bobcat football, so I appreciate you guys having me. I think it's that time of the year where uh, we're all starting to itch for a little bit of content, some news, something substantial. So we had signing day yesterday. I don't know if we want to talk about that. We were just talking before we hit record. Didn't even think about the fact that it was just National Signing Day. But uh, yeah, let's get some good content out here. Let's get a nice interview for the, the Bobcat fans out there. Yeah, absolutely. No, yesterday was a good day. Um, you know, we um we had a lot of a lot of dudes that uh you know we we had our eyes on um that we didn't get in the early sighting period. So we got uh you know finished it up. You know, our staff been nonstop uh this you know this contact period trying to get some guys that's going to continue to help us. So no, we feel good. Uh, feel good about our class. So you know, we're almost we are almost to that uh, cycle where. You know those those six and those six and seventh year COVID years. Um, those guys are kind of cycling out. So whatever normal is now in the recruiting cycle, we're getting closer. That's good to hear. Uh, it's it's wild to kind of watch the the re- recruiting cycle go on 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 the Twitterverse and whatnot. I can't imagine what it must feel like to be a coach. I know you started for Montana State as a recruiting coordinator. And we'll uh, touch on that. But first, I guess it's just like, how'd you come to Montana State? What's your story? Uh, kind of give us your background on like, I know you started over in Ohio as a player, but uh, give us a little bit of background on your coaching and I got to Montana State. Yeah, I, um, so I played, um, I'm from Hamilton, Ohio, and I played at Buffalo University in, in McKenzie, Tennessee. And I did that for a few years. Um, And and then, you know, I I came back and and I wanted to be involved in the game. Um, And I just thought, hey, I'm going to go to school. Uh, I'm going to go to Miami University. I'm going to get a get a degree in special education. I'm going to coach high school football. And that's what I'm going to do. But, you know, as, as I, you know, coached high school football for for five, six years, um, as I was going to school, I wanted to, I wanted to coach college ball. So I, Chuck Martin got hired at Miami, Ohio, um, had no idea who I was. Um, I just, I was the guy that kept showing up that, uh, was just always out there. And finally he was like, who the hell are you? And, and, and what do you want? Um, so that's, I started volunteering there um and then i became a ga and i and that's where i met taylor house um our our previous offensive coordinator and i had known him 
previously because we're similar age, um, you know, knew who he was, had met him before, had had similar friends. Um, so we were both GAs at the same time. Um, so obviously from there, you know, his path took him, uh, you know, through through a few other places where he met Coach Vegan. I kind of w- went a different route. Um, I GA'd there at Miami for a couple years. I went to Davenport University, a Division II school in Michigan, and coach receivers, um, co-special teams coordinator. Uh, then I went to um, a high school there because our staff got let go. So I coached another year of high school at Grand Rapids Catholic Central, won a state title, um, and substitute teached in Detroit. And then I went to um, a Stingham University in Ohio where I was the special teams coordinator for a year. Uh, then I was the defensive coordinator for two years. And then out of left field, Taylor House right calls me and says, hey, Coach Vegan, um, who, who I had met uh, one other time uh, at a clinic. He said, hey, I think he's getting this job at Montana State. And I'm like, where the hell is that at? Um, <laughs> so we, uh, I'm like, man, I'm, a, I'm the defensive coordinator, man. I, I don't know if I want to do it. He's like, come on, I need you. If something happens um, on the field position, we'll take care of you. You know, we'll give you, you know, the director of recruiting title. Uh, you'll work hand in hand with me, uh, with the quarterbacks. Um, and, and something's going to happen. Something's going to pop and, and you'll get a spot. And as soon as you do that, um, you, you'll get that position. So that's how I got here. It was knowing, uh, knowing. Uh, Taylor. Um, and then as far as, you know, coaching experience, I had done a lot of things, a lot of different positions. So I had, I had faith, you know, obviously I enjoyed being the defensive coordinator, uh, you know, doing my own thing, but I also knew that Montana state um, had a tradition of winning football games. Uh, it was a great spot and a great environment uh, at the top of the FCS. And I knew that I had faith that we were going to win some football games and things would just shake out. And, you know, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, it worked in this case. So, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's, it's been an awesome, it's been an awesome experience here the last three years. And, uh, you know, my wife and I have a kid in Aspen who's a year, almost a year and a half and we have another one on the way. So it's been a good journey and, and, and we're looking forward to, you know, this next, this next phase of, you know, our time here at Montana state. And now you are the offensive coordinator for Montana state university. One of the most scrutinized positions in the entire state. <laughs> are you ready for that, man? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I enjoy it. You know, I, I <laughs> think, um, I think that having been in, 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 in called, uh, called offensive plays, you know, at different levels, been a different, been a coordinator, it's both, all three phases of the ball. I, you know, I want them. I, I want people to, um, you know, have pride and, and have expectations, um, in, in the cats, you know, that's what makes this place appealing. Um, and that's why players come here. That's why coaches come here because they know there is a standard, there is expectations, um, and people are going to let you know, and that's okay. Um, and because no one, uh, no one has higher expectations, uh, for our football team, our offense and myself than we do. So it's awesome. I, you know, I look, I'm looking forward to it. Well, when you first got here, you started kind of as a director of recruiting. Uh, tell us, tell us what that involves. Yeah, that was, um, you know, that was a way to obviously, you know, get, get me here um in a position where i could contribute um they hadn't had one montana state didn't have a director of recruiting position yeah prior to me getting here um so yes did i did i ha- handle some recruiting i did um you know i would say that i was uh, a little more involved um you know in the offense than you know it seemed uh i didn't you know we had another another recruiting uh, department person, so to speak, and Ryan Weiss, who's with the Chicago Bears now. But he, it was it was him and I, and I really, you know, focused on the offense. It, uh, you know, Taylor was a first year coordinator, 
He needed someone that he knew, that he trust. You know, I sat in every single meeting and sometimes, you know, pretty much, you know, went hand in hand with him on offensive game planning um, along with our other coaches, but working with the quarterback. So, you know, to sit here and say that I, I oversaw the entire recruiting effort that'd be that'd be stretching it you know um because i had other other things that i was focusing on it was really implementing the offense that 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 we were putting in at the time um and then and then helping where i could you know where where i was allowed to you know being an off the field guy i sat in the box i was in the press box right next to taylor for two years um so um it was it was yes director of recruiting but i would say more offensive assistant um to be specific so just a little bit more on the recruiting i was just wondering what does it take to get a guy to come to montana state how does that process go well the the good thing um the good thing about recruiting to montana state is is it helps that you know we we have some of the, the best facilities at this level. We have some of the best fans at this level. We, you know, we have an unbelievable, you know, um, academic, you know, rep- rep- representation uh, across all phases, um, different majors. So when we, when we when I go to recruit guys here, it's like, hey, you know, obviously we're competing against – you know, we're competing against Mountain West teams. You know, we don't lose too many guys uh, to, to FCS schools. And we're looking for the most competitive dudes on the planet, guys who love the game of football, guys who want to come somewhere and be a part of something, um, who are mentally and physically, you know, tough. And they kind of they kind of answer the question for them. You know, hey, do you want to, do you want to go somewhere um, where their standards – where you're going to be held accountable, where you're going to not have an opportunity to compete for a national title year in and year out. And if that's something that you want to do, um, then, then, then we're on track with, with, with being here, because if you, if that's something you don't want to do, um, mm-hmm. then you, you can go to a lot of other places. Uh, so do you want to go to a, a low end FBS school in the Mac? And I just say that cause I'm, obviously went to Miami and coached there, but are you going to, you're, you're going to win six games. You're going to play in front of 5,000 people and you're going to go to the good daddy bowl. That sounds terrible. Uh, here, uh, you're going to play in front of 30,000 people. You're going to win, you know, hopefully 15 football games and you're going to compete for a national title. So I mean, it, it's not, it, it's, do you love the game of football and do you want to be a part of something special? And, and the guys that we're going after understand that, you know, there, there's a FCS, FBS, whatever you, they, they understand that when they come to Montana state, you're going to have great support. You're going to have great fans. You're going to play in front of a lot of people who care about football. Um, and you're going to have an opportunity to get a great degree. And in the meantime, you're going to win a lot of football games and compete for championships. So recruiting guys here, uh, it's, it's a lot, um, different than some other places I've been. Like I mentioned, um, it's, you, we're trying to find the very best football players that, you know, love the game and the most competitive dudes on the planet. Um, and, and we're recruiting against the, the Mountain West. You know, we're not recruiting against, you know, any. And this is no disrespect to any of these other big, you know, big sky schools. They just you know, we're just at a different level. You know, we're just at a different level, and that's why the expectations are at a different level um, be, because of what we have and 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 the, what we think, you know, um, about ourselves and, and and some of the facilities we have. So it's it's a fun thing to do to recruit Bobcats. Is it kind of a case of part of the biggest challenge is just getting them to Bozeman on like an official visit or a recruiting visit? And then once they're here, they realize, kind of like you, like, where the, where the hell is Bozeman? Where's Montana State? And they get here and like, oh, okay, I see it now. I see why. Yeah, yeah that, that's – so. you know, the biggest question I get is, you know – are you guys by the TV show Yellowstone? And is that what it looks like? And, <laughs> oh, and I'm, damn it. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, well, you know, man, there's not a bunch of horse and buggies rolling around here. I, I can promise you it's, it's, it, it'll, it'll look, it'll be, you'll, you won't even know the, whatever perception you have of being out in the middle of nowhere in, in the giant state of, of Montana. It's, it's not even like that. And, and there is some, some eye openers, especially with, 
some of the guys that we're recruiting. So, you know, I would say our footprint, you know, my my specific area, uh, Southern California, you know, I have San Diego um, into San Bernardino County, you know, the IE. So a lot of those guys uh, in that area, some are familiar with the big sky, just with some of the big sky schools being there. So they're familiar. And, and a lot of our games are on ESPN plus and some, some national and televised games. And, and they understand that, you know, and a lot of the coaches down there understand that they were, they were big time football. Uh, so they know, um, I would say there's, uh, you know, so, some of the guys that we get from Texas and some other places and spot recruit the state of Ohio, obviously, because uh, a few of us were from there. They really don't know until they do get there and they fly in. They're like, whoa, this place is ridiculous uh, from a facility standpoint, from a people standpoint, from just what we have going on here. Um, it, it is an eye opener. And I and we don't lose. We don't lose too many. If we can get them here, our, our hit ratio is is pretty good. Yeah, I bet that's a, that's what uh, I remember. Our previous coach, coach Jeff Choate would say that, like, just let just give me just get them here. I can sell it. Just get them here. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we get it. We get them here. We're, we're, we are pretty good because it's any, I mean, you're going to fly into here uh, or you're going to fly into Pocatello. I mean, you tell me, I, I don't, it, it's, it, we don't lose too many. <laughs> I got one last question about uh, recruiting here before we move on to something else. Um, how are you selling the indoor practice facility? Is that something that is helping with recruiting? Yeah, the, you know, the indoor, you know, we it's huge. And, and, and to be honest, it's it's uh, we are selling it. You know, we have the we have the, the BAC and uh, they're, they're they're building the scoreboard right now. I look outside my office and there's two giant holes and they're putting up big pillars. I can't wait for that thing. Hu- hu- it's going to be humongous. It's ginormous. Um, so and then, you know, getting renderings of uh, the new indoor and it's huge because it right now i would say it's for us we're going to use it when we need to use it in the fall but it's for right now when our guys are thrown we need you know we in the last three years we we're trying to find times to to throw in the bubble or throw in the brick uh trying to find times we can off you know our guys can go in and throw and work out and run and change the direction and morning runs you know it, there's snow on the ground right now um not that we still can't get out there just you know how efficient um are these workouts going to be And with the indoor, they can go in there at any time. Um, they can, they, they can throw, um, anytime we get good workouts in the fall. Are we still going to practice outside? Probably. Yes. Yes. It, probably. Um, uh, because outside of a handful of teams, um, they, you just can't, you know, manipulate, uh, you know, the environment, uh, when you come here. Uh, so that's still, we're still going to use it when need be, but that indoor we're, we're it's, it, it puts us right up there with, you know, these mountain West schools, you know, we have everything uh, that we need, you know, it, the goal is to win national championships and that's the, that's, that's what it is. Um, and now this is just another piece uh, that's going to help us um, and help our players get to where we need to be. All right, Tyler, uh, before we jump into uh, some of the OC conversation, I want to jump back a little bit into the tight end room and uh, you had your hand deep in that room. Obviously you were the coach, you lose Snell pickering some of Montana's finest tight ends in the last probably decade. I mean, it looks like a deep room. It looks like you have four returning. You guys signed three different body types, big dudes, strong dudes, fast dudes, blockers in line, you name it. I mean, a couple questions on, on that room. How, how have you developed such a deep room? And it seems like you like demand excellence from, from those guys. And then kind of like the back end of that question is what have you learned in that room? That's going to help you as a play caller this season. Yeah. The, the tight end room. And, and I will, I would say this. I, I was always a, um, I was a receivers guy. You know, I played quarterback, I played receiver. I was a receiver guy, but the longer, um, the longer that I have been coaching, uh, there was something about the tight end room, you know, it's very, very similar to being in the quarterback room. Uh, we're the only room 
who has our hand in just about every fire that there is, you know, whether that's pass pro, whether that's running routes or in the run game, inside run, seven on seven, and we're a part of everything. And I want to be part of everything. Um, and I want guys who want to be a part of everything. So with Snell and pick, you know, I, I was very fortunate. Yes. We're with us with Snell, uh, first team all conference and an all American and pick was first team all conference. Yes. But those are dudes are really good football players. So they made my job easy. But what we did was, you know, we set a standard in there, um, of just what we're trying to do each and every day. You know, we're trying to get, you know, better each and every day. We're trying to be a complete football player, uh, understanding, you know, from a defense perspective, understanding defense, understanding offense, understanding leverage, understanding where the defense help is, um, you know, different things like that, incorporating, you know, uh, the run game, uh, taking pride in our blocking, taking pride in uh, blocking on the perimeter. Uh, and then as a weapon, you know, I, I often say that those tight ends are the best, the best offensive weapon. And I, and I truly believe that, um, you know, knowing that, that, you have a couple tight ends on a football team that can be in 12 personnel flex out to 11 personnel formations. I can get one in the backfield. One's running it. Now he's throwing it. Now he's motioning as a defensive coordinator. That was brutal. Absolutely brutal. Um, Cause you just don't know the tendencies are out the window. Um, and when you have guys like those two dudes, it, it really played into that role. And losing those two guys. Yes. Um, I'd love I'd love to have those dudes every single year, but I think the big thing is is what we did um, was continue to uh, develop each and every person uh, in that room, you know. And offensively, you know, we talk about all the time that we're going to be a high percentage, fundamentally sound unit, you know, with aggressive schemes. Um, we're attacking opposing defenses and being disciplined, being consistent, being unselfish. And those guys in that room did, and in particular, you know, Ryan Lonergan, he, a, a Bozeman kid, Snelly goes down, Lonnie steps in, and the drop-off from a, from an athletic standpoint, obviously, Snelly's very um, athletically gifted, um, but Lonnie held his own, and, and, and because of that, you know, that attention to detail and, and us double-repping and us doing some things, uh, he, he ended up helping us win football games because he could get in there. So, you know, and Lonnie's going to have a big year. You know, he's going to have a good spring. He's going to have a big year. Uh, looking forward to, to Lonnie um, stepping up. Obviously, we had a transfer uh, that signed with us midseason, Rohan Jones from Maine. And, you know, he's a very similar body type. He's a 6'2", 235-pound body type. He look and he's going he's gonna to wear eight. Uh, he's going to look like a Derek Snell. Um, so yeah. we're going to try to utilize him. Uh, very similar uh, that we have done. And that's, that's just, that no, doesn't take a, you know, a genius to figure that out once we got him. Um, and then uh, Hunter Proviance for the, the red shirt freshman, the six, five kid from San Diego. He's a long gifted uh, route runner, uh, long levers, good ball skills, you know, has the ability to be attached and, and, and help us in the run game. Uh, so I expect him to, you know, continue to develop and continue to help us. Ryland Schlepp, uh, uh, another Bozeman, you know, Bozeman kid uh, from Gallatin. He he has transformed his body from the time he got here till he's now. I mean, he he's six four, two hundred and forty five pounds. Uh, he looks like a um, a Trayton Pickering. <laughs> that that that's who he looks like. Um, so I'm, you know, we're trying to. Here's here's the. Here's the recipe. OK, so let's go out and find these puzzle pieces and let's find them and put them together. So there's always a, a body type when we were looking for a tight end. You know, were we looking for, you know, the six, five kid, 240 pounds? That's great. That would play at Wisconsin at the time. I didn't need that. I needed a Derek Snell. Um, so we were going to cross and find it any way we could find someone that could replicate what he did. Um, so. And when you have those type of guys um, in the tight end room, it changes how you do call call football plays. You know, it really it really opens opens some different doors. Of what you can do um, from you know motions and shifts and formations and, and run game and even the pass game and the RPO stuff, and it, it helps our 
you know, the complexity in our offense is from the presentation. Uh, it's not so much from schematically of what we do. It's, it's how we do things and how we present things and having those tight ends certainly helps to do that. And, and I would say if you went back over the last three years, you know, we, um, you know, I think, uh, off the top, I think we're 32 and nine. Um, the, a lot of the times, you know, our tight ends have been very, very effective in, in the run game and the pass game. Um, and, you know, in different trick plays or different, different things we've done, they've been right there front and center. Um, and I don't, I don't see that changing. Um, that's just kind of how our offense rolls. Um, the offensive line drives the bus. The tight ends certainly are, are sitting there co-pilot, and then obviously our skill guys are executing in space. So, yeah, I've been very fortunate, um, you know, to have really good players, you know, uh, in that tight end room. And I think that, um, you know, I think the guys in there that are going to be, you know, playing this year, the you know, the eight guys that we'll have are just just are continuing to develop, and and the drop off from Pick and Snell hopefully um, doesn't drop off too much. Well, when one thinks about Montana State football, you know, in the last couple of years, it's pretty clear that Montana State innovated through the two quarterback system. I have a little bit of a theory now, especially since you've been hired, that we're going to innovate through the tight end, 11 personnel, 12, 13 <laughs> personnel. And you were just hitting on that. And like, I, I think my theory is solid now listening to you is, is the window <laughs> dressing that we can give that defense is get, get their head spinning. And plus, we got all those body types, like you said. We got the big guys. We got the small guys. We got the strong guys. Flex them inside, outside. Uh, am I on to something there? I mean, you don't have to go too much more into it, but is that what you're thinking too? <laughs> well, I, t- I, I tell you this. I tell you, we, you know, from an offensive philosophy, you know, it is always, you know, it, it, people say it all the time. They're like, hey, you know, think, you want to think players, not necessarily plays. Um, and I think, I think there's a lot of truth to that. You know, we want to be able to offensively control and dictate the tempo and keep it simple. Um, And like I just mentioned, you know, look complex, but not, but schematically our guys playing at a high tempo, get our speed and space, you know, be able, be unpredictable down in distance, field position, personnel formations, play selection, you name it. Uh, We want to be able to do that. And and, and we utilize um, a number of uh, a limited number of runs, a limited number of passes. Uh, But when you throw the the window dressing uh, in there, uh, there's a lot. And and, and what we're trying to do is uh, create mismatches from a personnel standpoint, get our guys in the best situation to be successful. Um, and however that may be and whatever that takes to do that um, is what we're trying to do because we really do uh, not only in the tight end room, uh, in the quarterback room, the receiver room, the running back room, uh, we have a lot of really, really good football players that, you know, they just need touches and, and, and get those dudes in space. Uh, and we could have a, a, a super, super, super successful um throughout the year so it's players it really is it's players uh rather than plays you know when you have really good players uh you can do some of that stuff and 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 the number one goal and and our coaching staff our coaching staff you said hey what's our number one goal and it's a we got to do whatever we can to put our players in a position to be successful we got to keep it simple and we got to be great teachers and once we can do that uh they roll out their saturday and they're playing at a high tempo on their execution uh, is that is at a high a uh, high rate and they're not thinking then you know that's when that's when that new scoreboard is just is just lighting up like crazy absolutely i love to hear it i got one last question on the tight end room before we move on to something else do you think Derek snell is a nfl guy i think he is you know i think i think uh Derek snell um is one of the you know most gifted um, explosive football players that I've been around um, from all levels. He does some things that you just can't coach. You know, I think, you know, obviously he he didn't finish the year last year. He, you know, he had surgery and, and that was, a you know, you could, you can definitely tell, uh, you know, we missed him. You know, you could, the impact of not having him was there. I think he'll get a shot, you know, I think pre-injury, if he, let's say he never got injured, hypothetically, I think he'd be, I think we'd all be 
uh, a lot, uh, you know, more optimistic of, of him going in the sixth to seventh round. I don't know, to be honest, I don't know where that is right now. Just with the injury. I know I saw, I saw him today. He looks good. You know, him and pick, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're getting ready for pro day and, and, and they're doing things to play at the next level. They both look great. They're both running around. Great. I think they both have a shot. I think someone's going to get a, a Derek Snell, you know, I think they're going to get him and they're going to give him an opportunity. And I think they're going to go, Whoa, this dude does some freaky things with the football. He's six two, two hundred forty 240 pounds. He's explosive. He can run. He's got great ball skills. He's a willing combat in the run game. So I, I, I do, I think he's an NFL player. Um, so I'm excited to to see kind of what happens, and and I know that someone's going to get a good football player. I mean, I totally agree with that. I think he's a guy who could have a decent career, carves himself out a career, just doing lots of different things for maybe a couple handful of teams, and stick around and make a good little NFL career. I think he's that kind of guy for sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, where do you want to move on to Foley? Do you want to talk a little bit about the offensive line? I know we got some questions in there. Yeah, we could hit on that and, and quarterbacks. We could save the quarterbacks for kind of the end, maybe. A little juicy talk. We okay. could talk about uh, national progression from tight ends to offensive line. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, despite losing, you know, Rush and Omar, the Cats still seem to have a ton of talent on the offensive line, which was uh, aided yesterday by the signing of Dylan Rollins. Nice nice job, staff, getting that guy over here. <laughs> pretty happy Absolutely. over here in Bobcat Nation. That's pretty exciting. A little surprise there. But it all starts there, right? Or how much do you lean on the offensive line to kind of set the tone for the offense that you're looking to implement or you know run at Montana State? Um, I mean, the offensive line they they drive the bus. You know, they're gonna we're gonna go as far um, as as those guys take us. You know, they it, and and it's it, they people say it, but it's the truth. You know, I think with our room, yeah, we did lose. We did lose some guys, uh, but that says one thing. We've lost some O-linemen consistently since we've been here. That's just because we're recruiting uh, and, and, re- and developing uh, the, the right way. Um, so, But even with that being said, we still have, um, you know, projected, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of banked reps from there. You know, you got Perk, at, Perk who has uh, played um, a, a, a lot of football for us, a ton of football for us. You know, he'll be he'll, he'll be a senior and, and he's a super intelligent guy who can, you know, get the right looks, get the right point um, and communicate on both sides of the ball. You know, obviously, you know, our two guards, you know, you have JT Reed back. You have Cole Sane back, who was hurt last year, will be back. You got Marcus Ware, who is an All-American type of player. You have Connor Moore, who's an All-American type of player from Ohio. I just got to mention that Ohio kid. <laughs> um, who, uh, so, but, but you, I mean, you got a lot of good guys and I mean, they, uh, they are unbelievably smart. They are super passionate. They love playing for each other um, and, and they care about it and they understand um, that, you know, we are only going to go as far as those dudes um, are going to take us, you know, and everybody sees hey, well, you guys are the number one rush team in the, in the country. If you take away, triple option or whatever and you average you know 6.7 eight yards of carry yeah that's all um but that's because hey we have really good players um, and that offensive line takes pride um the don joy mafia baby they take mm-hmm. pride in doing some of that and i tell you you know coach johnson our offensive line coach does a great job i mean the guy the guy played in the nfl he played at wisconsin um so he brings a lot of knowledge uh, offensive line play um and it's a good partnership between them and that's what it is uh between our uh coach johnson and the offensive line and there's a lot of the guys in there you know titan titan from idaho uh you know it'll be a big spring spring uh for him you know have said from uh cedric Jefferson from you know the ie southern california and burke mastel um and zeke it, it, it just signed with us so we got a lot of guys in that room um that have played a lot of ball uh, that are continue to play a lot of ball and that are going to keep taking us where we need to go. Yeah, Coach Johnson's done a heck of a job with that crew. I was a little worried when Coach Army left because he was such a stalwart in the program. Um, but uh, it just seems like Montana State is just leading the way with the offensive line. Uh, but we'd be remiss about talking about the offense if we didn't mention Tommy Malott. He's going to be a senior. 
Got new Corvax coach Chucky Keaton coming over. Uh, just a little bit on what what do you expect from Tommy this year and kind of out of the quarterback system. I know probably a lot of people are wondering if uh, if we're going to continue running a two quarterback system or will it be more of a Malat show. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, I've been uh, with Tommy, you know, I've been fortunate that um, ever since I've been here, you know, I've been here every year he's played. Um, this will be his fourth fourth year as a senior and I've seen every game that he's played here and I've, I've, I've have, have a good relationship with Tommy. So I, I think, uh, Mr. Malott, uh, he is <laughs> one of the most competitive, um, human beings that I've ever been around. Uh, I know he loves the state of Montana. He loves the Montana state Bobcats. Um, and he is going to do whatever he can, uh, to make sure that he's putting us in the best situation on Saturdays um, to win football games. And I mean that he is, he is, he is unlike anybody I have ever been around. Um, and it, it gives, it gives, it's contagious. It's contagious to our guys, the rest of the rest of the quarterbacks in the, in the room, but it's also contagious to the rest of the offense and the team. And I think Tommy, you know, he's going to, he's going to do um, anything he can, everything he can. So I expect, you know, him to have another, you know, a solid, a solid year. He's, he's developed, um, you know, from that first year in, in 21 where he, played sparingly until you know the playoffs and then 22 and then last year uh and so this year you know it's going to be uh it's going to be tommy's tommy's you know job uh as we know there's not a there's not a sean chambers isn't here anymore so you know there's a lot of discussion obviously who's starting who's playing who how many rips is tommy getting what's sean getting you know, with that, you know, we were able to utilize a lot of that two quarterback stuff. And, and again, if you don't have the players to do that, uh, you can't do it. And, and I think, um, you know, to say that we won't um, dabble in that world, um, we could. But we looked at a lot of those things that we were doing. Um, it was it was the same thing that we would do with you know, a Lance McCutcheon or a Willie Patterson, um, you know, we we're just, it was, and everyone knew it, it was, it was the, everyone knew when we were doing it, the, the, I hate to talk about the Bison game, but when Tommy came in with a two quarter, like the whole stadium went nuts because they knew we were getting ready to do something with two quarterbacks and Sean and Tommy in the game. Um, mm -hmm. So it's our <laughs> offense. It really is. You know, it wasn't like we had, you know, uh, a bunch of, uh, random uh gimmicky plays that were were executed for just those two those plays could have been ran out of base sets um it just gives again it gives people things to think about it gives um it gives people like hey gets their eyes off of where they're supposed to get, uh to be so you know, I don't know, you know, if that game plan uh, uh, calls for something, would we would we do it? it we will do whatever we need to do uh, that we feel is going to put our guys in a great situation. And if that happens to be it, um, then then it might be, you know, it, going with Tommy. Obviously, he's super, super well documented about him. But in that room, you know, Jordan Reed, you know, played played some reps last year. He's a longer six, six. 220 pound um you know people say pocket but man he moves well he he does some things uh the ball is is about as pretty as it gets when it leaves his hands um so he he's a talented passer that has the ability to run uh, and be dangerous uh, he's a smart football player um so he's definitely going it's going to be a big spring for him uh he's definitely going to help us out he's going to play a lot of football here uh he is because he can do some things um, you know, with, with the ball in his hands and he can throw the football. And, um, so we feel good about him, you know, Chance Wilson, uh, he's a six, one, 200 pounder from, from Oklahoma. So mm -hmm. the guy can straight run uh, that boy can run. Um, so, and, and he didn't, you know, play, uh, but not because he wasn't able to it's just, we didn't obviously need him. Um, but he's going to have a big spring. Uh, he's he falls more into putting people in slots. I would say he falls in the Tommy category, but 
I think they're different players. Um, so, but, but chance is a guy that that's going to play for us, uh, down the road here. He's going to play some ball here. Uh, Patrick Duchesne, he's a, you know, a Montana kid. He's going to, he, he's a thicker, he's a thicker dude. Now he's six two, two hundred and twenty 20 pounds. Uh, so he is a bigger looking Tommy. Um, so the room's deep, you know, the room is deep and there's a lot of potential in there. And with coach, uh, Chucky Keaton uh, coming on board, you know, I think, you know, um, with his with his past experience of playing the position at a high level, um, he can relate uh, with those guys in that room. And I think, um, you know, some people, a offense coordinators are the quarterback coach, offense coordinators. This I don't I, you know, I think I think having a guy that his sole um his sole responsibility is to obviously help um, implement and 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 help us in the offense, which he is. Chuck, he's gonna is a great offensive mind. He's gonna help us tremendously uh, offensive game planning. But he doesn't have to go into Saturdays worrying about calling plays. He has his job is to coach the quarterbacks. And I think you know, not saying that uh, you know it can't be done the other way because obviously it gets done that way a lot. But I think our guys. You know, um, I think, you know, I think they're looking forward to, you know, having a guy who their sole responsibility is them, you know, from a fundamental standpoint to a coaching standpoint, to a past experience standpoint, to be able to relate. So, you know, we're excited with that room, you know, we're super excited. Anytime you, anytime you have four and, um, you know, Julius Davis in the running back room coming back and you got some tight ends, you got some offensive alignment in the receivers room with, you know, with Ty and junior and, and taco and, and tremble and all those guys coming back. We, we got a lot of weapons. I know that we got a lot of things that, that, you know, give uh, other teams, you know, blue sleep at night. I can tell you that. So, you know, overall we're, we're super excited. You know, the, we ended up not where we wanted to be, uh, but like I talked with our guys, we were well, yes, we fin- we finished eight and four. That's the facts. We did. Um, you know, we lost three football games. You know, within uh, the last a minute and thirty seconds, one play here, one play there, uh, and it's, we're t- we're talking totally different. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's that's irrelevant. We we lost the football game, uh, so we got to find those inches that we that we uh, you know we lost. And we, and, you, and I tell and we talk about all the time. You find those inches right now. You're just not going to wake up on a Saturday in the fall in Moscow, Idaho, and find an inch and move it in our direction. We got to find those inches and move them now because the margin of error at this level, um, with where we're trying to be and playing meaningful football games in December and January, uh, you got to find those inches now. Uh, and, and that's what we're doing. You know, our guys have been out there rocking and rolling. So, you know, we're about, you know, we're about five, six weeks away from spring ball. Uh, so we're looking at we're look, March 19th, we start that. So, you know, we're, we're itching to get rolling. Oh, can't wait. Can't wait. That's exciting stuff. Thanks for kind of walking us through a little bit of that quarterback stuff here. And we kind of touched on the running back room. We got uh, some proven commodity back back there. I think the Bobcat fans pretty much know what we got back there. Are there any other position battles on the offense that we should be looking forward to in spring ball? I know we got some uh, wide receiver attrition and uh, Lanyata Alexander should be factoring in there. Am, am I assuming that's correct? Yeah, you know, we're, you know, I think that receiver room, I would say, you know, we feel really good, you know, and not that we haven't felt good about that room in years past. Uh, I just know everyone uh, year 2021 was, you know, 86, Mr. McCutcheon making a lot of football plays, Um, you know, in these last couple, they haven't, you know, quite seen what, you know, what they saw uh, that year. But I know I feel as good about this receivers room and coach Udy um, than I, that I have since I've been here, you know, you have, you know, you have junior, uh, Alexander, you have Ty McCullough and taco and Trimble and Marquee. Um, you have Aiden Garrigan who's played some snaps for us. So there's a lot of guys in there that, um, are going to compete and it's not so much that a, hey, who's the starter, who's not the starter there there's, you know, there's at any time we could have, four do four receivers out there we could have two we could have one we could have three but everyone's gonna play we need we need guys playing reps um you know they all kind of do a little bit different ty he is 
he can go now. That guy, and as you guys saw last year, McCall, he can run, um, and he's going to continue to do that. Taco, he can run. Uh, Tremble, he can run. Marquis Johnson, he can run. Um, Junior's a little bigger. Javante King uh, from Idaho, he's 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 going to help us. He's six three, two hundred and fifteen pounds. He's a long joker, man. He can go get the pill. Um, so he's going to help mm-hmm. us. Christian and I is going to help us. We got some guys that, uh, you know, Tommy is going to, you know, feel comfortable throwing the football too. Um, you know, people ask all the time, well, this offense is, can't throw the football. No, th- that's not the case. We can throw the football. Um, but when you rush for 400 yards in a game, you know, the, it's, it, it, it's kind of changes uh, when you want to call those plays. So, um, it, it kind of varies, you know, we, and it's okay. Cause Tommy can do anything in the passing game and we have receivers that can do anything in the passing game. Some games are going to dictate uh, that we throw the football a little more. Some are, are going to dictate where we don't need to. Um, so, you know, super, super excited about that room. I can't, you know, I can't explain enough how, you know, how, you know, people, you guys are going to see like, whoa, there's some dudes in that room. Uh, that can do some special things. And, and we got a few freshmen that are going to come in and help us too. So the receiver room is great. And as you mentioned, that running back room, man, there's a, there's guys in there that can go, you know, Julius and, and Scott Trey, you know, had a few plays last year and, and, and Jared White showed up and Adam Jones showed up and Elliot showed up. So there's a lot of dudes who are going to continue to touch the football. Um, so yeah, I would say that we, our job as an offensive staff is let's find ways to put those dudes in great situations, get the hell out of the way, and let them go play. <laughs> Getting yeah. me excited over here. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> you got yourself a good problem there, Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, I got one more question for me. I know we're getting close to wrapping this up. Um, it was kind of a more of a difficult question when I wrote this. I was reflecting on, on the times Montana State kind of – came up short last year idaho uvm ndsu and um i just kind of want to know like what do you take from those kind of games what do you what do you learn from that and then uh what do you go how how do you move forward uh in in reflection of that yeah you know there were you know i i I will say that in the in the three these last past three years you know there's been there's games that stick out to me that that you know i just have an unsettling feeling and and you mentioned the one the, the game in moscow that one yeah. that one was t- a tough 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 pill because um it it wasn't anything you know and this is not going to not disrespect to Eck and and, and the vandals they, they didn't do anything um other than being there to really shut us down we got in our own way um, and I think, you know, it, it's to blame it on one thing or to say that in, in that game in particular, that the players weren't executing or the coaches weren't executing, you know, at the end of the day, that that was our as an offense. We couldn't convert first downs. Uh, we couldn't hold on to the football defensively. We couldn't get them off the field. Um, so when you say you want to play complementary football in all three phases, uh, that's what you want to do. And th- then that example there is an example of us not doing that. Um, so I, I always think, I think as a coaching staff, we can continue to find ways to put our guys um, in situations early on uh, to get rolling, especially when you're going into a hostile environment. Like, like you know, that was the first time I've ever been in the old Kibby Dome. Um, so, and I think we can continue to find ways to put them dudes in better situations. Um, so, you know, obviously we didn't do a great job as a coaching staff uh, offensively that day. You know, you think about other games, you know, South the, the other three games that we lost, you know, the South Dakota state game. Um, you know, we, we, we had the national back-to-back national champs. Uh, quite frankly, we had them beat. Uh, we were in the red zone. Uh, we're on the goal line. We can't punch it in. We have uh, Derek Snell. The, the, I love him. Uh, we're jumping off sides. So now we're, you know, we're backing up five yards. Now it's third and six. So we had opportunities and those are the inches I'm talking about that right there. We are an inch here, an inch here from beating the Jackrabbits in Brookings second week of the season. Um, so, uh, but that doesn't, you know, and, and everyone wants to talk about the last play with CTN, you, you know, it shouldn't even have got to that point. I know that, I know that happened, 
Uh, but we should have taken care of business. It wasn't just that one play. You don't lose or win football games on one play. Uh, normally, it's it's you know there's other situations where you could have capitalized. Um, and, then, and then over the hill, you know, at the end of the day, um, the goal here is to you know beat the Grizz, you know, win the Big Sky, um, and compete for national championships. And and we didn't get that done. Uh, we just didn't. Uh, we went over there and and um, we just didn't get it done, you know. And again, we 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 couldn't get off the football field uh, defensively, and we couldn't stay on the field offensively. Um, and you know, and they executed, and we didn't. Um, so we have to take those situations and swallow our pride. And as painful it is to watch some of those football games, we got to fix the issue. We got to find the issue. Um, and we got to fix the issue and simply saying that the the players didn't execute. That's not the answer uh, because they might have not executed certain plays. But as a coaching staff, I know we didn't execute certain situations. So it's collective. It's collective. And then, you know, you go to the North Dakota State and, you know, we had them beat. And again, you know, we had a, we, we had the lead with, uh, with with, you know, under right around two minutes to go in the football game. And we go to overtime and, and we get a field goal. Uh, we got a PAT blocked. So it's tough. It is, you know, those are gut, gut wrenching uh, losses, especially when the expectations here are so high and the standard is so high. You know, you ask anybody, you know, what the goal is. And if, and if, if the words Frisco, Texas didn't come out of their mouth, then uh, I don't know what they're talking about. Cause that is the ultimate goal, you know, but I think we um, as a program, as a staff, as our players, uh, we've done a great job of, listen, here's the facts. You know, we lost these football games, uh, you know, based off of this, that, or the other. You can dissect it however you want. But at the end of the day, we got to keep taking care of the right now. You know, we're going to be where our feet are. We're going to take care of today. Uh, we're going to be 1-0 and today, and we're going to move on tomorrow. Because if we keep taking care of every single thing that we're supposed to do and we keep finding the inches that we're supposed to find, winning championships, beating the Grizz, and being a Frisco is going to be a byproduct of everything we do uh, from here on out. So, you know, and, and, and we are, we've learned and we're going to continue to learn. We're going to continue to develop because, um, you know, I tell the guys all the time, the standard's the standard. Embrace the chaos. It's going to come each and every day. That is a fact. Um, you know, there's, 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 you know, situations, there's not necessarily problems and you're going to have a situation each and every day. Uh, so we're going to figure out how to solve it. We're going to win the day and we're going to move on. So, you know, those are tough losses. Um, the most we've ever had in a year, but hey, at the end of the day, uh, it, we're not, we're not shying away from it. We didn't get it done. Uh, and we're going to, we're, we're going to make sure that we, you know, don't let those things happen again. Well, as we head towards spring ball starting up here pretty soon, here's to 2024 season of finding those inches then, huh? <laughs> That's right. We're going to find them and move them, babe. We're going to find them and move them. That's right. I love to hear it. Uh, we'll get you out of here. I know. Uh, thank you for your time. We're going to be appreciative of your time here and uh, aware. I have a very important question in this interview on, though, probably the most important question we've asked this entire podcast. You call in <laughs> place from the booth or of the sideline? Uh, I, I will probably be in the booth. I will probably be in the booth. You know, obviously coach vegan, um, he's, he's, you know, he's caught a lot of football plays in his day. So I, I lean on him and, um, uh, from a overall perspective, you know, I feel like you could see a lot of things, uh, from the booth that you can't see on the field. Um, I would say, you know, if you're coaching the quarterbacks, like, uh, coach house right was you know it, it, there is a part of it that you want to talk to your guys but coach chucky keaton will be down there uh talking to the quarterbacks uh in person as i will be also just on a headset so i would say if i was a betting man i would say probably the booth if i had to answer that right now but you know um uh, that's that's probably where you will which i'm comfortable i've been there and that's where i've been so all right Tyler, man, that was straight fire. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm sitting over here just ready to uh, run through a wall, man. You got me juice. I, I can't wait for Bobcat football. Hey, man, I just want to say um, just thanks for the time and just candidness with us. I know the listeners are just going to eat this up. And, man, just excited for you. I really am. And uh, good luck this season. 
I appreciate it, and I appreciate you guys' support and everything you do for the Cats. I know our guys, you know, our, our guys, uh, they know. They know that we got a lot of support. We got a lot of people like you guys out there, and, and, and that's and that's what helps us, you know, show up every day and want to get rock and roll because we know those Saturdays mean a lot to a lot of people across the state. And as I've learned, it's a giant state. So uh, <laughs> we appreciate it, and, and I look forward to uh, seeing you guys out there at old Bobcat Stadium in time. So I appreciate it, and take care. All right. Thanks, Coach, and uh, go Cats. Go Cats. Go Cats.